Hello everyone, I'm Rich Stocks. This is the Healthy Christian Broadcast. Today we are going to see that we tithe with our mouth, not just with our hand. Stay there. I'll be right back. Thank you for joining us today for The Healthy Christian with Rich Stocks. James 1.17 says that every good and perfect gift comes down from above from the Father of lights. We are proclaiming God and His Word as the one source of spiritual, physical, and financial well-being. Now, here's Rich. Good things come from the Father of light. Shadow of turning or changing its mind. Hello, friend. I want to encourage you to subscribe to our Healthy Christian YouTube channel. We have hundreds of videos. It's free to subscribe. If you click the notification bell, you'll know every time we post a new video. There's a link to the channel on our website, richstocks.org. We have two other websites for our friends and partners for nutrition and wellness. We have mineraldoctor.com for weight management, simple3slim.com. I want to say thank God for all my partners. Together we are sending God's Word to the whole world through television and social media. Every week we hear from people and they're hungry for the Word of God and this is made possible through people just like you. The Bible teaches that we are to sow into the ministries that we receive from. So if you're receiving from this ministry, I want to invite you to become one of my partners. We have a video on our website called Becoming a Business Partner with God. The web address is richstocks.org. I join my faith with yours for a great harvest on every seed you sow into this ministry. Hello everyone, for many of you it is Christmas week, for some that may be watching it's Christmas Day or either Christmas has just passed, so uh, if you haven't celebrated yet I want to wish you a Merry Christmas and if you've already uh, finished celebrating, uh, continue to celebrate throughout the year. It's one of my favorite times of the year, so I'm wearing my red today for Christmas. This is our last uh, broadcast for 2023 and we are going to finish up our series on the Lord's tithe. I hope you've been enjoying this. I mean, you think, well, how could you have week after week, month after month, talking about one thing, the tithe? It's just bring the Lord a tenth. Well, there's a lot more to it than that. I would encourage you, if you're just tuning in for the first time, go back, go to our YouTube channel, Rich Stocks, The Healthy Christian, and get caught up. Watch all of those videos about the Lord's tithe because here's what we've looked at. Our key scripture is found in Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30 through 32. It says, And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. That's Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30. And so we have looked at, in these many weeks and months, we've looked at the what of tithing. What is the Lord's tithe? The word tithe simply means tenth. The biblical tithe, there was more than one tithe in the Old Testament, but we've just been looking at one. It was called the first tithe. I like to call it the Lord's tithe. So the what of tithing, what is a tithe? A tithe is a tenth. The biblical tithe is the first tenth and the best tenth. Then we looked at the who's of tithing. Who does the tithe belong to? We read it right here. Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30, it says that all the tithe, all the first tenth of the increase of all the earth, the first ten percent, God said, was His. So what is a tithe? It's a tenth, and it's a holy tenth. It's the first tenth, the best tenth, as it applies. And whose is it? It is the Lord's. It's always been the Lord's. We looked at when did the Lord's tithe begin? I would encourage you, because this is going to be an odd statement if you're hearing it for the first time, the tithe began before time began. And I know that's an unusual statement, so I want to encourage you, go back and watch these videos. We saw that from Proverbs chapter 3. I'm not going to take the time to read these, but in Proverbs chapter 3 and Proverbs chapter 8, we saw from those two scriptures, you put those together, Wisdom existed with God, it said, before the earth was ever formed. In the beginning, wisdom speaking, says, I was with God there in the beginning before the earth ever was. 
And then so anything you read in the book of Proverbs, these wisdom principles of God, these wisdom nuggets of God, existed in the mind of God. God decided these before the earth was ever created, before man ever existed. And one of the things he said was that we were to honor the Lord with our first fruits. And I know many people, I picked up a book the other day, and they were using that verse to teach Proverbs 3, 9, and 10 about the first fruits, to teach about first fruits offering. Well, they didn't bother to look and see. It's a different word. It is not the same Hebrew word that we find under the law that talks about the first fruits offering. It's a different word. It's talking about the tithe, the Lord's tithe. And God decided that the tithe was His. A tenth of all the increase of the earth was His before time began. So we looked at the what of tithing. We looked at the who's of tithing. We looked at the when of tithing. It began before time began. Then we looked at the why of tithing. Numbers chapter 18, verse 21. God said, Behold, now remember, remember He said, All the tenth is mine. And then look what He said. Behold, I've given the children of Levi all the tenth. King James calls it a tenth here. That's what a tithe is. It says, Behold, I've given the children of Levi all the tenth in Israel for an inheritance for their service which they serve, even the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. We had many lessons on that, the purpose of the Lord's tithe. Why does God want me to tithe? Go back and watch that. That led us into uh, many weeks talking about tithing in the New Testament. And then... We said where. So we looked at the what of tithing. We looked at the who's of tithing. We looked at the when of tithing. We looked at the why. The purpose was for God's ministers in the Old Testament, for God's ministers in the New Testament. That's the why. And then where? Where should we bring the Lord's tithe? 1 Corinthians chapter 9, Galatians chapter 6, 1 Timothy chapter 5. You bring your tithe to those who minister God's Word to you on a consistent basis. That might be your pastor. I know there are those who believe that and teach that well. There are many people watching me, perhaps hundreds or even thousands, who don't have a pastor. So, are you just off the hook? So, I mean, that's one of the reasons I don't teach that. I went into great detail as to why I believe the tithe belonged to the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. And I went into great detail about that because giving is not a commandment in the New Testament. It says we are to give as we purpose in our heart, but you're not going to find a scripture, Old Testament or New, that talks about you purposing in your heart concerning the tithe. The tithe is settled. The amount is settled. So the tithe is for your ministers. If you have a pastor and you believe that, great, bring it to your pastors. Uh, you know, if you're in a larger church, the, the man's name um, that they call the pastor is, is not your pastor. You don't know him or her. He, he or she doesn't know you. So they have a pastoral staff. But there are people, many people watching me. You're not part of a local church. I'd be great if you were. You don't have a pastor. So... Are you just exempt from tithing? No. No, you still need the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher to minister to you the Word of God. And as you do that, you are to reciprocate and minister from your material wealth, however great, however small that is. That is the biblical pattern. I don't have time to teach it all again. Where do you bring the Lord's tithe? To those who minister to you the Word of God. That's what Abraham did right there in the beginning, right there in the Old Testament uh, with Melchizedek. He was the priest of the Most High God. He blessed Abraham with his words, and Abraham blessed him with a spoil of all the material increase. And then we move to the how of tithing. So again, we looked at the what of tithing. We looked at the who's of tithing. We looked at the when of tithing. We looked at the why of tithing. We looked at the where of tithing. And today we're finishing up on the how of tithing. Now we had several lessons talking about the missing ingredient in tithes and offerings. And we saw the missing ingredient is faith. So how do we tithe? This is sort of part two. Even though we had four or five lessons on the how, we talked about the aspect of faith. 
You, it, the Bible says that by faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice, a more excellent offering to God because of his faith. Cain brought an offering, but he didn't bring it in faith. Well, Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us what faith is. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that God is and, don't forget the and, my brother and sister, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. If you're bringing God your tithes and offerings, but you are not expecting God's reward, God's not pleased with your tithe or your offering, no matter how large it is, He's not pleased. He doesn't receive it, just like He didn't receive Cain's offering. You must bring it to Him in faith, but today we're going to see another aspect of the how, and we're going to finish this up in many weeks and months. <laughs> some of you are maybe glad I'm finishing. I know I mentioned this to you as a lady coming to some of my meetings in Indianapolis, and then, you know, she seemed to really be enjoying it and didn't show up a time or two, and I told one of her friends, I said, hey, I didn't know the lady well. I said, is she all right? Give her a call. And she did, and I said, what did she say? She seemed to be enjoying it. I said, well... <laughs> She said, she's not going to come back until you finish teaching on tithing. She doesn't want to hear any more about it. Well, that's a shame. And she admittedly that she didn't tithe. She said, well, I'm glad you're teaching on this. I've never understood it. I've never done it. So then I started teaching on it. Well, you can't sit under the Word of God. One of two things is going to happen. Either it's going to change you. You are going to change and conform to the Word of God or you're going to reject God's Word as truth. And if you do, you're probably going to leave that church or that ministry. So, the how of tithing. How do we tithe? You tithe in faith, expecting God to open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing there's not room enough to receive. But then also, we're going to see in today's lesson that tithing is an act of worship. How do we tithe? We tithe in faith, expecting God's reward, but we also tithe as an act of worship. I just hear this coming up on the inside of me. It's, I've said this before. Tithing is not just throwing money in an offering bucket. <laughs> I heard I had a pastor one time. I knew this pastor well. And he had invited me to minister to his church, very small church, very poor church. I grew up in that town. It was in my hometown. I'm not anymore. I don't live there anymore. Thank the good Lord. I'm glad he allowed me to move somewhere else. But I lived there for many, many years, was born there. Knew many of the pastors in town. And I knew this pastor well. And he was on the poor side of town, same side of town I grew up on. I grew up near the railroad tracks. You've heard the expression, the wrong side of the tracks. I grew up on the wrong side of the tracks, near the tracks. I, you could hear the trains every night that wake you up through the night. I used to, to play on them as a teenager and, you know, crawl under them, climb over them, those sorts of things. But this pastor, before I ministered, he said this. He said, well... Let's get the offering out of the way so we can get on with the service. That's just appalling to me. Now, I was young in the Lord then, young minister. I'd been saved many years, but I was young in the ministry. I didn't say anything, but I'm not sure that I could stand in a pulpit today and allow that comment to be said and not address it. I don't know if I would. I know, you, you, you know you've got to be respectful. You don't just come in and correcting pastors and trying to take over the church. But guys, that's horrendous. That's one of the most ungodly statements I've ever heard in my life. Let's get the offering out of the way so we can get on with the service. This pastor had no revelation of the tithe, offerings, how to tithe, that we are to bring it to God as an act of worship. To be honest, we rush through it too quickly. I know many of you watching would disagree. I hear even ministers say, well, these pastors, 
They take all this time teaching about the offering, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, good. Good. Do you have room to hold to contain more? God said He wants to open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. You don't have enough room to receive. Do you still have room? If you still have room for more, then you still need to hear more about the Word of God, what the Word of God says about the Lord's tithe. That is to be an act of worship. This pastor said, let's just get the offering out of the way so we can move on with the service. What if that was to be the service? What if that was the most important part of the service? That's one of the things, one of the opportunities we have after you're a believer to actually bring something to the Lord. People always talk about giving, giving, giving. Well, before you're born again, you have nothing to give to God. And you can't even bring Him a tithe unless He's given you something to tithe off of. You can't bring a God, God an offering unless He's given you seed to sow. But your tithes and offerings, we're going to see today, we're talking about the how of tithing. How do we tithe? In faith, expecting God's reward, but also as an act of worship. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 1 through 15. I'm not going to read all 15 verses, but I'm going to bring out some of the highlights. In Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 1 through 15, verse 3, the Lord gave instructions on how the people were to tithe and bring offerings. And the first thing he said in verse 3 is they were to bring their tithes and offerings to the priest. Well, we've seen that over and over again, Old Testament and New Testament. I don't have to spend a lot of time on that. They were to bring them to the high priest. In verse 3 of Deuteronomy 26, it says, Then the Lord commanded them to declare with their mouth. We said at the beginning of this, you don't just tithe with your hand. You tithe with your mouth. You tithe with your words. It says that they were to declare with their mouth that they had come into the land, the inheritance that God had promised them. In other words, the promised land. You've heard that terminology, the promised land. So when they brought their tithes and offerings, they were to bring it and set it before the priest, put it in a basket. There's your offering basket, guys. And once they did, they weren't just getting it out of the way. Well, let's get the offering out of the way. Oh, no. No, they took some time with this, probably more than any modern-day church does today. We should be taking as much time to worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings as we do with our music, with our instruments, with our clapping hands and raising hands. Maybe more. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10, we're to honor the Lord with our wealth. Honor Him with our money. That's not getting it out of the way. That's not throwing money in a bucket. That's not honoring the Lord. That's just doing some religious duty to ease your conscience or so that you won't look bad that everybody else is giving something. So I'll throw in a couple of dollars. No, keep it. You're going to need it. So if we're going to do it, I'm of this persuasion. If I'm going to do something, I want to do it right. I don't want to do anything half-heartedly. I used to. I coached my kids you growing up in different sports, I did not like getting second place. I remember one year we had a great team, but there was a team we could not beat. The next year I got, we got smart. We joined those two together and we were undefeatable. Couldn't, couldn't, nobody could touch us. But I didn't want to go get that second place trophy. I was not excited about it. I said, well, Rich, that's not bad. No. But it wasn't good enough for me. I want first place. I don't want to do anything halfway, half hard. I don't want to throw money in a bucket. I'm not interested in just giving the Lord a tip. It says here that they were to declare they'd come into their inheritance, the promised land. Then in verse 5 through 9, they were to verbally rehearse where the Lord had brought them from and where He had brought them to. In other words, their testimony. They started talking about our father was a Syrian, talking about Abraham and how that they had come into Egypt, and they were brought under bondage. But then God brought them out with great signs and wonders. Do you have a testimony from where God's brought you? I get goosebumps all over me as I'm sharing this right now because I'm thinking of my testimony. I'll share it someday. I didn't have $6 to start the business that I'm in, and the Lord had brought me up to a six-figure income and beyond. 
So when you tithe, you're to do these things. Now, if your church, I can tell you right now, your church is not, probably not taking the time to do this. So don't wait till you get to church to write the check. The tithe is not an afterthought. This is forethought. You need to take some time and worship the Lord. And if your church isn't doing this, you need to be doing it, my brother and sister, at home before you ever leave. Don't just, oh, well, we forgot the checkbook today. I can't tell you the number of people that have come to my meetings. Rich, I forgot my checkbook today. Well, you weren't thinking about it. I'm not trying to condemn, but you don't forget your checkbook. If you're a tither and a giver and you had already planned on giving in that offering, you're not going to forget your checkbook. You're always already going to have prayed about it. You're already going to, going to have presented it to the Lord, have spent time worshiping the Lord, and you know exactly what you're putting in, and you bring that holy thing to God as the holy act of worship that it is. That's not throwing money in a bucket. In verse 10 of De Deuteronomy 26, they were to set the tithes and offerings before the Lord, and worship Him. For how long? I don't know. Verse 11, it says, Then they were supposed to rejoice in every good thing that God had given them. Well, that's going to take some time. I mean, there's half your church service now. We're praising and singing songs and music and all of that. But why don't you do that? You could incorporate your tithe and offering time into your worship time because that's what we're seeing today is that the tithe is an act of worship and it was done with the mouth. The only thing they did with their hand was set it before the Lord. Everything else was with their words declaring. So it says that they were supposed to rejoice in every good thing God had given them. Then in verse 13 through 15 of Deuteronomy 26, they were to declare that they had separated the tithe from their other money. They had not used it for any unclean thing. And they had separated, sanctified it as unto the Lord. And then in verse 15, it says, this is the good part, they were supposed to remind God of His promised blessing. They were supposed to say these words. The Lord told them that when they brought their tithes, say these words, Father, we've brought it to you now. Well, they didn't call Him Father then, but Lord, we've brought it to you. Look down from your holy habitation and bless your people. Are you doing that? Oh, Rich, I, I just give expecting nothing in return. Yes, I know. And that's why you need to be watching this and you're learning something new today that, that the how of tithing is you tithe in faith, expecting a reward, and you do it with your mouth. And the last thing he said here was you are to say, God, I've brought you your holy tithe. Now look down from heaven and bless your people. God commanded them to say that. If you're not doing it, then you're wrong. The preacher's not wrong. The Bible's not wrong. You're wrong. You are to expect God. I say to him, Father, you said that I am to prove you, put you to the test. You proved it last month, but now I'm bringing it again. Prove it again this month. Rich, I'd be afraid to talk to God like that. I would be afraid not to talk to God like that because that is what He has commanded us to do. we got to keep moving. So what's the New Testament parallel to presenting the tithes and offerings? Well, who is your high priest? Hebrews chapter 3, Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 6 declares that now Jesus Himself is the high priest. Priest. He's the high priest of our confession, the high priest of our profession. He is our faithful high priest. Whenever I bring my tithe to God the Father, I also I am presenting it to the Lord Jesus Christ. I say, Jesus, as my high priest, I bring this just like the pattern under the, under the Old Testament. I'm bringing it to you, my high priest, and I'm bringing it, and then I worship before the Lord. I make these confessions. I say, Father, here's what you've done for me. I was so broke I didn't have six dollars, and you brought me out to a six-figure income, and you gave me this business, and you've done this and that, and, and I go through these things. I rehearse, and then I rejoice, and then I worship, and then I say, look down and bless me again. This this month. Oh, Rich, it's not a blessing club. I'm telling you, God has commanded you, my brother and sister, that when you bring the tithe and offering, He has commanded you to tell Him that you expect His blessing. And if you're not doing it, you're wrong. Then you are not tithing correctly. You're not tithing in faith and you're not doing it as an act of worship. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 8 says, Here men that die receive tithes. That's the ministers, the Levites, who your pastor. But there, so where's here? Here is earth. So where's there? There is somewhere else, not earth. Here men who die receive tithes, but there he receives them, of whom it is witness that he liveth. Who is that? 
Revelation 1 verse 18 tells us, Jesus said, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. So you present your tithe to Jesus, verbalize your testimony, what God's done for you, lift your tithe and offering before the Lord, worship Him, rejoice in all the good things God's done for you, declare that you've separated it, you're not spending on yourself, then remind God of His promised blessing, tell Him you expect the windows of heaven to be open. Here's what I say. Here, verbatim, if you want this, you email me, I'll send this to you. I say, it is the Lord my God who's given me, this is what I do when I tithe an offering, it's the Lord my God who has given me the power to get wealth. That's Deuteronomy 8, 18. Then I say, the blessing of the Lord has made me rich. That's Proverbs 10, verse 22. And then I say, the windows of heaven and the doors of opportunity are open for me. That's Malachi chapter 3. The devourers rebuke for my sake, Malachi chapter 3. All of God's grace is abounding toward me. That's 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. I always have an all sufficiency in all things and I always have an abundance to give to every good work. And then I confess I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. That's Galatians 3.13. And all of God's blessings are coming to me and overtaking me, Deuteronomy chapter 28. It says, I'm a lender. I'm, a, I'm a, the head and not the tail. I'm above only, not beneath. I'm a lender, not a borrower. Everything I set my hand to do will prosper and it's blessed. I honor the Lord with my wealth, the first fruits of all my income and increase. Therefore, my bank accounts are full and overflowing and I have more than enough. I, I know I about ran out of time. We are out of time. Last broadcast of the year. Guys, if you want these notes, email me. I'll send these to you. And remember, my friend, as we end this year, go into a new year, God desires above everything else that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Hello friend, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our Healthy Christian YouTube channel. We have hundreds of videos, it's free to subscribe, and if you click the notification bell, you'll know every time we post a new video. There's a link to the channel on our website, richstocks.org. We have two other websites for our friends and partners for nutrition and wellness. We have mineraldoctor.com for weight management, simple3slim.com. I want to say thank God for all my partners. Together we are sending God's word to the whole world through television and social media. Every week we hear from people and they're hungry for the Word of God and this is made possible through people just like you. The Bible teaches that we are to sow into the ministries that we receive from. So if you're receiving from this ministry, I want to invite you to become one of my partners. We have a video on our website called Becoming a Business Partner with God. The web address is richstocks.org. I join my faith with yours for a great harvest on every seed you sow into this ministry. Thank you for joining us today for The Healthy Christian with Rich Stocks. If you enjoy this teaching, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. For additional teachings by Rich Stocks and to help us send God's Word to others, visit our website at richstocks.org. You can also send your praise reports, prayer requests, and questions through our website. The website is richstocks.org. That's richstocks.org. Good and Flow to me Coming down from